climate crisis is one of the biggest threats facing humanity right now. And confronted by such a problem, states and scientists are searching for solutions. Some you may have heard of, and others may be a little more unfamiliar. When we talk about blue carbon, we're talking about the carbon captured by coastal and marine ecosystems, specifically mangroves, tidal marshes, and seagrass. Just like trees on land, these so-called blue forests can absorb and store carbon, but they do so at a much faster rate. In fact, seagrass can capture this element up to 35 times more quickly than tropical rainforests, and it can then be stored for thousands of years. The beauty of it is that once it's captured in the plant, we're generally talking about the rhizome, so this brown, thick meadow that's underneath the leaves, and that's what's holding the vast majority of the carbon. So even if the plant would die off, the rhizome is still underground and it will ideally stay there unless somebody's actively pulling it out. Manuel Marinelli is sailing around the Mediterranean replanting seagrass meadows. This ecosystem is disappearing more and more rapidly because of a number of factors such as pollution, coastal development and destructive fishing practices. But what's essential to maximizing conservation efforts? Funding. This is where blue carbon credits come in. Blue carbon credits are um, emission credits that are generated by uh, restoring and conserving uh, blue carbon ecosystems. If you're familiar with standard carbon offsetting, we're pretty much talking about the same concept here, but it specifically relates to aquatic plants. Let's break this down. Essentially, Companies who want to balance out their polluting emissions can buy credits from a third party, often a business that trades in carbon reduction. Each credit sold is a promise that the third party will remove a certain amount of carbon from the atmosphere. For example, this could be done by planting more mangroves. Over time, this will theoretically offset the pollution released by the company that is paying. Some carbon credit markets are labelled mandatory, which means they were created because of legally binding emissions targets. They function a little differently. A regulator, say the government, tells companies they are only allowed to release a certain amount of carbon and therefore grants them a specific amount of credits. Then, if the company emits less carbon than expected, it can sell its excess credits to other businesses. But carbon markets can also be voluntary, like the one outlined earlier. Many businesses nonetheless buy these kinds of credits for ethical reasons or to boost their public image. Caterina Grillo, who works for ANP WWF in Portugal, says that even if a carbon market is voluntary, credit should still be vetted. What we need is governments when regulating their voluntary carbon market to define what are the standards that they are allowing to be used in their, you know, within their borders. And so not to let everything to the market, basically. Manuel also warns that some carbon removal companies are promising unfeasible results. We had conversations with companies that actually approached us asking, so how many seagrass plants can you plant in a year? Can you do, say, 5,000 plants in a week? and then we would support you with X amount of money to do whatever amount of planting. And while I quite like the idea of getting money in exchange for doing restoration work, there is just no way on earth that I could promise to plant a certain amount of seagrass plants in a week, let alone 5,000. It's just unreal. It's impossible. He explains that because of the unpredictability of the natural world, it's also impossible to predict how much carbon will be offset. I think one thing we have to move away from is 
the fixed idea of saying I give you this amount of money and you capture this amount of CO2. It's just not how the world is working. We had heat waves in the Mediterranean that were, that were unseen ever before and we lost entire meadows because of water temperatures well above 30 degrees. In an effort to combat phony carbon schemes, the European Commission outlined a voluntary framework to certify carbon removals in 2022. Although it's yet to be finalised, the proposal wants to make the verification of carbon credits more thorough. The blue carbon market is yet to take off in the EU, but as demand races ahead of supply, some experts are predicting a boom. The credits could be a powerful tool against climate change, but conservationists say they mustn't be misused. <laughs>